Greetings, friends and followers. This is Nessus Talking. I am Dale Barcy. As always, if you like what you see and hear, subscribe, leave us a comment or a like. So today my guest is Ms. Charmaine Thompson, who's a registered nurse on the island of Montserrat. She, she has a master, master of Science degree in nursing from the City University of London, a Bachelor of Science degree in Health, Service, Health Studies from the London Metropolitan University. And she's a certified mental health nurse and a researcher and an author. In addition to which, she has kindly agreed to speak to us today from her place of work. Shaman's nursing journey started in September of 1981 and she has expertise as a specialist nurse in neurology and mental health facilitator and a therapist. She's a best-selling author and has published over 20 books, including Face Space, Culture, Songs, and Poetry. So thank you so much for agreeing to speak to us today, especially as I know that you're at work and you know this is going to be um, an exciting interacting interview. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. And I'm grateful that you, you know, asked me to do this. Um, you know, being at work is, is ironic because we try to promote nursing all the time. And if you have the opportunity to be at work and be able to, you know, have a discussion regarding your nursing career, this is my 40, this month, September makes 40 years wow. of nursing. Mm -hmm. Remember, I started 1981 on the 1st of September. Okay. And so, yes, on the 1st of September, there's one batchmate left on the island. We okay. went for lunch. Okay. So this is an, what you call this? It's really an anniversary month. Awesome time to be actually doing this interview. Well, look how things work. Yes. Okay. So you mentioned that you did, you, you did, you started become, you became a nurse on Montserrat. Right. Yes. Tell me about that. First of all, what drew you to nursing? Who inspired you? So um, my first choice would, would not have been nursing. As I was going to school from primary up, I was very good at English. And I always thought I would be an English teacher. I actually admired my English teachers. Mm -hmm. I was always getting something like close to 100% or 100% in mm -hmm. English. Mm -hmm. And English literature, of course, I loved yeah. because of the essay writing. However, my journey, my, the start of my nursing journey is actually a story in itself. All of my life is a story, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> which is why oh. I love it books. Yes. <laughs> so um, one day I was walking with my mom and she met a friend of hers and the friend stopped her and, and said, um, I dreamt about this child, this young lady, you know, last night. I'm not sure if he said last night. But yeah. Last night sound good to me. But however, he said, I dreamt about this lady. So my mom was curious and she asked, well, what dream? What's this dream all about? And he said, I dreamt that this young lady was a nurse in England. So he saw me in England wearing my white, mm -hmm. my starched cap, uh, yeah. like the Florence Nightingale days. Yeah. And so, okay, so that passed. However, since that moment, my mom, you know, she kept encouraging me to become a nurse, apply for nursing, because that was the year that I actually left school. And that was okay. the, um, the summer period. And yeah. so it was time for me to choose a career. And so I applied for nursing. And here I am 40 years later, still a nurse. Still a nurse, still a nurse. So here's, here's my question. I know that um, requirements to enter nursing school has, have changed over the years. Yes. What was it like when you um, entered nursing school? So when I entered nursing school, most people were entering as, were entering the nursing assistant program. Mm -hmm. And then later on, those who did not have a qualification, which was the minimum qualification then to become a registered nurse or to enter that program was two GCSEs. Okay. It's your levels. One had yeah. to be math and mm -hmm. one had to be English. You know? Okay. And okay. the others will have the social sciences, etc. Yeah. Yeah. And so 
in comparison now you have to have four subjects yeah. to enter the nursing program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so things mm -hmm. have changed. Yeah. You know, and of course, you know that people are entering academia to become yeah. nurses. So right. they go to university now. Yeah. Now, when I started, your training was predominantly in the hospital in itself. Hospital. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. you had three months of block. And they, they taught you what your theory, you had your various tutors coming in, yeah. and then you were placed on the ward for a period of time. Yeah. And then I think three months later, you had block again. Uh, so yeah. th that was a sequence, three yeah. months, then on the ward, then block. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, there was a lot of um, practicum in, in, you know, as part yeah, of yes. the, yes, as part of it, it as mostly, part of your Mostly practical. Yeah, yeah. And so then, uh, so you became a nurse. Did I you work as a nurse, nurse in Montreal after, right after that? So I became, so what happened, I need to give you my, it's another story. As I said, my life is, and I love <laughs> stories. I just love storytelling. <laughs> yeah. The first month, which was September, I got pregnant. So I started my training, I was pregnant. Yeah. So while in training, we found out that I was pregnant. And in those days, nursing was a very clean profession, whereas you could not um, commit sin, I'm calling it sin, yeah. and okay. still be a nurse. You couldn't get pregnant then yeah. out of wedlock and yeah. still remain a nurse. Mm -hmm. However, in my case, I think I got lucky or blessed because if I'm one of, if not the first case that they actually kept after being pregnant as a student nurse. And the only thing they told me is that I would have to wait for the next batch of nurses, which okay. was very few and far between because uh -huh. being on a small island, we didn't have batches every year. Yes. And so yeah. I had to wait for the next batch, which was from 1981. It was 1986 that I was able to start my training again. So yeah. in the meantime, I work as a nursing assistant. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And then 1986, I entered the student program, done my stripes, and you know, and things moved on from there, progressed until by 1989, I completed my exams. Okay. Okay, and then I see that you ended up in England, just as his dream said. <laughs> yes, but, but before we got, get to England, let me just say that um, and one of the reasons why I'm back here today is because Montserrat, you know, they invest, if you specialize in certain areas, they invest in you a lot. So along the way, I have had a lot of um, courses that actually helped to pre prepare me for life in England, you know, okay. Okay. inadvertently, you know. Um, so I did my car went to St. Lucia and I had basic counseling, you know, mm -hmm. course. Mm -hmm. And that was 1992 or 93. Then mm -hmm. a year or so after I was sent to uni the University of Tampa, Florida, we did a more advanced counseling course. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I also, before that, because in 1991, I actually traveled to um, Jamaica where I studied for mental health. Yes. Okay. Later on, my plan was never to go to England, despite that dream. Don't forget that dream. You know? <laughs> yeah. Despite that dream, my plan was never ever to like migrate to England. Right. Um, however, the volcano erupted mm -hmm. and circumstances determined that I needed to take, you know, part of my family to England for yeah. education mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. because the educational opportunities on the island had changed I and see. they weren't mm -hmm. able to educate all the children. Mm -hmm. Also, England offered us the opportunity to migrate um, there. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, I migrated to England and continued my nursing career. Yeah, yeah, but but by the time you got to England, you were pretty much well rounded from what I'm I'm hearing. Pretty much. Um, In fact, I was already specialized by the time I, um, I went to England. However, when I got to England, I had to start from the bottom up. 
So I had to go back. They had um, bands, as in bands. Yeah. Bands came in later, but they had bands then. So they had grades. I think I was a grade D. Mm-hmm. So I think they had grade D, E, F, go up. And I started at the grade D, which later tra- the change um, to, it's called a band five. Yeah. Wow. yeah. It's a band okay. five, which is the most junior registered nurse. Okay. So I went back from being senior here to being a band five. Yeah. Mm-hmm. However, the one thing I can say about um, England is that if they think you have potential and you're a hard worker, they will actually support you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So while there, I actually I started out as an agency nurse and I was working at, um, I remember, some of our Grove um, Health Center in Hackney. And when my period was up, I think they had something called winter pressures. And so I was employed for a set period of time okay. as part of their winter pressures. Yeah. When when my contract was up with them from the agency, they felt um, they had this empathy towards me, not my situation, but the fact that they actually liked me and they liked the way I worked. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't imagine me going back to work for agency because um, there's a thing in England that the nurses who work for agency were not that great. Right. And so they didn't want me to go back to work for an agency. So they Uh said to me, apply to the um, Horton University Uh Hospital Uh and we'll provide you the reference. And so I applied for several jobs. I got all of the jobs. Okay. And I had, yes, I was interviewed and I was successful. And um, I had to choose. I choose Key of the Elderly. Okay. Later okay. on, yes, later on, I moved on to stroke unit. Okay. While on stroke, um, one, one senior um, practitioner, he was covering the hospital nighttime, and might I say he's white. Um, I don't know why I'm saying that, because <laughs> I think um, sometimes because of, you know, discrimination and so on, we, we need to point out that, that we are supported by all peoples. Okay. You mm-hmm. know, yeah. okay. so that's my, that's, that's the point yeah. I'm trying to make. Mm-hmm. So he approached me and said, have you ever considered being a specialist nurse? And I said, no, me coming from Montserrat, I'm not even thinking of anything like that. I'm just thinking <laughs> of survival. You yeah, 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 yeah. I was not yet thinking like that. Yeah. And he said, he said, I think you will make a good specialist nurse. He said, a post um, might be coming up soon on this unit, the neurology unit. Uh, and he said, I think you might be suitable for that. He said, listen now. And when it comes, you need to apply. So I listened out and I, you know, heard when it was advertised. Of course, he was not even any way around to give me like a reference or anything. Yeah. So he did not really play a part in anything that that um occurred after the moment he spoke yeah. to me on the yeah. night shift yeah but i applied for the job and i was successful so i felt i was suitable and the thing is for me it was a new area okay and i was a little bit skeptical because yes. montserrat doesn't have anything called neurology mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. but they told me i had to make the job my own i had to develop the job yeah. And in addition to that, they had staff that were very behavioral and they were receiving a lot of complaints from patients, relatives. And so now I had to come in as a specialist nurse, work to reduce the complaints, okay, work okay. to educate the patient and the relatives and, mm-hmm. and work to educate the staff, staff. the nurses, mm-hmm. and also change their mindset. Yes, yeah. that behavior that was causing the complaints. Mm-hmm. I had to work with them to improve their behaviors. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Discipline. And within, so my training went on for 18 months where they asked me to choose wherever on the, in the country I wanted to be trained. And they said they would pay for any accommodation. The training had to be free. And this is in England. England yeah. had free training. Right, the right. training had to be free, but they would pay for resources and any accommodation that I needed. If I needed uh-huh. to stay in a hotel for two weeks, they would pay for it, which is what they did. Uh-huh. So in uh-huh. the end, I, after 18 months, I was uh, promoted to a band seven. Okay. And I worked within the, the role of specialist nurse. For me, it was a very exciting area because I was given autonomy and yeah. really 
mm -hmm. how I developed them post. I was driving to a lot of the hospitals within my catchment area, which was East London and okay. Essex. So you had how many, several million people that was within my catchment area. Yeah. And I went to hospitals, meet new people, learn new things. It was exciting. Good, good. And so within six months, though, there was a turnaround on that unit. It was a neurological unit that serviced yeah. that area of London. There are not many of them. It's a highly esteemed unit. And the um, consultant, the senior consultant, Richard Greenwood, is a well-known neurologist. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Consultant neurology. He write, he's written a lot of educational books, etc. Okay. So yeah, so so we turned around the unit in no time, six months. Exciting. Yes. And, and you know that's something I am you know proud of today. And the other thing is that one more thing is that I was able to co-author a lot of the research, some of the research that occurred within the unit, mm -hmm. which is actually published in the clinical um, journal of I neurology. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So that was a great achievement for me. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you know what, that was one of the questions I wanted to ask you, what you were so, what you're proud of. Thank you for telling me about that. Yes. So your current specialty now is, is mental health. It is, um, you know, I still look at, at neurology as my specialty. However, I'm working within the speciality of mental health and I'm really an advanced nurse practitioner. Okay. So you find that I can fit in in several different areas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Choosing this um, mental health, um, it was not really a choice per se. It, I wanted to give back to my island. Okay. You know, I wanted to come and support them, whether voluntary, mm -hmm. whether, whether voluntarily or otherwise. And it happened that this um, this was available and needed support in this area, mental mm -hmm. health. Yeah. And of course, this is where I'm coming from here. This is my background here. Yeah. And I had actually come back in 2001 after the move to the north and work within the same area. So I was pretty much experienced, skilled, and in a position to actually support this mm -hmm. particular um, area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you're back home and doing things. Yes. So what, where would you like to see um, nurses and nursing in Montserrat? Um, do, do, do nurses, I think the question I really want to ask is, mm -hmm. at the moment, and do nurses have an opportunity to play a, a big part in um, healthcare policy making and, and, you know, how are we going to move things along? There's a lot of talk all the time about the healthcare in Montserrat. If you listen to conversations within the diaspora, the healthcare mm -hmm. in Montserrat is not that great. Are nurses getting an opportunity to put their two cents in into where we would like to go with this? In terms of policy, um, the thing is, you know, they're still working on upgrading their policies. And I think the last thing that happened for the island was that they actually they brought a consultant in to, um, to write some policies. Um, I do not think those policies have been implemented as, as yet. And the actual fact is that I was not around when she was doing her consultation. But mm -hmm. from the way I see Montserrat operating in terms of developing other policies and guidelines, the way I see them working on the hospital project, for example, where they invited not only nurses, but other stakeholders and the general public okay. to become involved and voice their opinions. I would think that that would have been the same process that was um, <clears throat> following. Okay. Mm -hmm. in terms of uh, healthcare policies, in terms of um, everyday involvement, mm -hmm. I think um, nurses need more exposure mm -hmm. to that, actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In fact, I was thinking earlier when I looked at, you know, your questions, and I was reflecting on, on how I would answer them, and you're going to tell me, I'm going to ask me this as well. I, I was thinking that, um, the nursing value need to go up. Yeah. It yeah. needs to go up. And nurses need to be recognized as professionals, experienced 
professionals and not just a bedside nurse, but a practitioner. Yeah. Yeah. So take me for example, I'm coming in from Europe, not only Europe, but I'm also coming in from the US where mm -hmm. I work with a wealth of experience. I would have had so much qualification for me. In fact, I completed um, a doctorate in philosophy, mm -hmm. you know, but, but my major is in divinity. So it's more of a um, spiritual pastoral thing, which has nothing yeah. to do with nursing, right. although they're transferable skills. Yeah. Yes? Yeah. However, um, as I'm saying, as an advanced practitioner who actually completed a master's degree, that's a high level. There are other people who yeah. have done so as well. Yeah. Um, I completed sort of a um, prescribing, um, prescribing yeah, um, course, yeah. mm. and I'm coming with that research background. And in my health studies, I also worked on policies and guidelines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was what my research was all about. Um, I think um more use let me say more use or nurses should be involved more in those um important areas not just be seen as someone who just um service provides service exactly. to service users they're more to us than you know that and i think we will get there in the future but i think we need to hurry because when while you while we're waiting for that to happen, we are actually losing the nurses who have to have actually have the know-how, the and skills. Know how to do it, right. Uh, yes, because what is happening now, what I've observed for myself is that we're they're buying in, buying in service, but the service that's coming in is not on par with the service what? that is no. here already. You understand? Because sometimes it's just like agency nursing, yeah. you get anything. Yeah, yeah. And you're not able, sometimes you're not able to verify qualifications and yeah. skills until you get it and then you realize this was just yeah. paper. Yeah. I was just in paper. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so I think they need to utilize, you know, those skills that they have. And I know you must know what you have. Even if you're buying a service, let's say I'm a researcher, for example, what can you, what use can you make of my abilities yeah. as a researcher? My yeah. contact with those. Exactly. The green woods and the lures, the, those yeah. consultants out there that people here will never have. Yeah. You understand what a wealth of, what a kind mm -hmm. of resource I'm bringing exactly. in. Exactly. Exactly. For them to find a way of utilizing that. I think it will come eventually. Mm -hmm. Right? But um, in the meantime, um, it's kind of a, like I said, sometimes I said to myself, being in, being here, unless you don't communicate with network with people outside, you can actually become this skilled. Yeah. Yeah. You can become this skilled. Yeah. I, I can see, I can see how that can happen. And so I, that leads me to a question though. Um, yes. Do you think that, I, I understand that the, the, the quote unquote powers that be actually really do need to take more advantage of, as you say, the, the skills, um, the skills that are present on one side. But also, do you think that um, as, as the nurses there, or their own mindset needs, I know, I should say our mindset needs to change a little bit and to put ourselves, because people will never, you know, there's a sound that says no one's going to come get you into the light where you belong. So yeah. people are never going to bring you up if you don't push. So does, does that yeah. mindset need to change? The mindset need to ch certainly needs to change, um, but um, I see people here who are positive mm. and they are go-getters mm -hmm. and they're reaching out and they're asking to be ah. used. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. But it's not, and we're not blaming any anybody because mm -hmm. maybe the system is not set up in a way that can use them in, in that way. And why I'm saying that is that Nursing here is nursing, as the word goes, nursing. Yeah. If you go to England, for example, and even America, and you get into academia, then you can work. You can work in legal. You can work yeah. in insurance. Yes, yes, you can yes. work in as a yes. professor. Yeah. But we're not set up like that. So there's nobody to blame, really. It's just the way the system is. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what the, what the nurses here, just they might just have to become a little bit creative. That's it. That's what I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they don't become despondent. Yeah. And use their enthusiasm. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, but I'm skilled, but what do I do with it on one side? Yeah. And I think you don't want to lose them. 
You understand? You know, maybe you have to, what you need to do is use them in the schools as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. they can support students who are coming up and need that little bit of a push yeah. to see that the world is bigger than what you see right now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I can, I can see that. I can see that. So I know that you do a lot. And I want to ask, <laughs> it's never too much if you're accomplishing it. <laughs> so I know that um, as a mental, as a mental health professional and you know, and all of that, um, for me, um, and as a nurse and as a as a woman, for me, I've learned that taking care of myself, self-care is very important. And I want to ask you, what does that mean to you? Because I realize. Self-care means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So what does it mean to you? Ironically, I just did a, did a lecture on Wednesday. I <laughs> so on this. Monday, on Monday, yeah. on self-care. So self-care is really holistic. And um, we start at the basics where we ensure that we are, uh, our lifestyle actually encompasses the way we eat, eating balanced diet, eating on time regularly, stuff like that. And then you move on to more um, sophisticated things like um, how you socialize as part of self-care, mm -hmm. how what you do about your spirituality as part mm -hmm. of self-care, your emotional health. That is important. What are you doing? Are you finding moments to relax? Are you finding moments just to reflect? You, you know, yeah, yeah. are you? And some of the things that I um, discuss in terms of self-care is in your relationship, because a lot of us as healthcare workers, we tend to neglect our relationships. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we forget that the people we are dating or the people we are married to, they're humans. And when they married to you, when they got married to you, they were looking um, for a person, mm -hmm. not just a worker. They were not looking for, exactly. Not just a work horse, mm -hmm. somebody who rushes out in the morning, mm -hmm. maybe care for the children, maybe even free their meals, or rush out, come back, and, and too tired to do anything else. So you have to find moments. I've talked about like dating your husband again, taking your husband out on a date. You know, mm -hmm. this is our date mm -hmm. night, a regular yeah. Friday night mm -hmm. or Saturday night. Yeah. Go have yourself a nice, Manicure, yeah. pedicure, make yourself look beautiful again, put on your makeup. In fact, you need to go have a massage and you can actually take your husband for a massage once in a while. Because yeah. all this make all this creativity makes a whole difference to your life and your lifestyle. Right? Because yeah. we are caring for people and people are dependent on us. And there's so many people that rely on us because we call ourselves nurses. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. kind of unreasonable. Yeah. They don't think because for them, a nurse is not a human being anymore. I know she is a, an output machine. Yeah, that can you can just call on anytime, anytime. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then she forgets, you know, that she has needs too. So we need to take care of self, and then that creativity where you find time for your hobbies as well. Yeah, so take time out for you do something you really love, and just relax. Just relax. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Very, very, very important. And, and, you know, also because one, because we're nurses and two, because for the most part, we're women, we tend to neglect. Yeah. We tend to want to take care of everybody else before us. That's right. So I have, I have another question that occurred to me, actually, I think it was yeah. yesterday. It occurred to me. If, if you had to just in one word, describe one essential quality of a nurse, what would it be? Humanistic. Humanistic. It's okay. a quality. It is a quality. A Humanistic. Quality. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. It embraces everything that a yeah. nurse is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I was, th I was thinking of, of, the, of that, uh, I think it was yesterday, and, and wondering, um, as we are nurses in so many different, and, and as I get to speak to more nurses and realizing mm -hmm. again that all, all of our um, 
all viewpoints, although we're nurses, all viewpoints are all the same. And so I was mm -hmm. just wondering what, 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 we, how we would we describe ourselves if we only had yeah. one word? I say humanistic because the most of what we do is so selfless. Yes. You know, it's selfless. Yes. I mean, take people from, for, like me, for example, who started for nursing 40 years ago when you did not have any gloves, taking you back into the dirty period of nursing, eh? And the day when I started nursing, that in that first two weeks, when my hand got dirty, soiled, that's all I'm going to say, my finger got soiled. And I went home and I washed and then I bleached my finger until my mother had to stop me and say, that's enough. Your finger cannot be dirty anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm trying I, to say? I certainly understand because I've had a very similar experience, but I know what you're saying. Yes. So, so you have to be, you have to, um, it's like, give so much of yourself that doesn't yeah. even exist for the most part. Yeah. You, I'm, I'm doing like you. It doesn't even exist because you're actually, actually neglecting self for others. For others, yeah. In a yeah. sense, yeah. which for all intents and purposes, you really should not be doing. Because if we take the scripture that say, love your neighbor as yourself. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And in context, there are times when we're doing things for people that you would never do for yourself. That's true. This is where the humanistic part of nursing comes That's in. So true. everything you do, imagine sometimes you have to leave your sick child and yeah. go take care of somebody else's sick child. Sick child. Leave yeah. your sick mother and go take care of somebody else's sick mother. Take mm -hmm. your sick self mm -hmm. and go take care of a sick. That yeah. is being selfless. Yeah. And that is not taking care of your neighbor as yourself. That is beyond that's, yourself. That's, that's beyond yourself. Yes. Yeah. So nurses are special people. There's nobody equivalent to a nurse. Not even the police. I agree. I agree. I agree. There's no match. I, my my, you know, when 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 people ask what I think about nursing and nurses, for me, my description would be that it's not it's not a job, it's not a career, it's not a profession. It's, it's just a state of mind. Yes. It's a state of mind. Absolutely. I mean, what would keep you as a nurse of 40 years? Exactly. What would keep you? What would keep you? Because remember, you know, the challenges are endless. And yeah. I'm telling you, the more continents that you work on, the more challenges you will face. And you have to find that resilience that yeah. will enable you to stay, especially when you actually, if you enter academia and you realize that academically, I can actually change my career yeah yes i'm smart enough yeah to change my career yes. but you choose to remain within the nursing fraternity yeah. among all those challenges it's not to say that there are no other challenges within other professions yeah however but there are professions that you will not encounter yeah most of the challenges that we encounter within nursing mm -hmm. exactly so you must be humanistic yeah you, you, you must be selfless special person yeah absolutely absolutely i, I agree i agree yes. and lastly lastly but not certainly not leastly um if you had to give advice to someone who wants to be a nurse what would you say i would say go for it go for it there is nothing like the satisfaction one gets from being a nurse um and i would also like to say to um, people who want to be nurses, like, don't just look at nursing in the narrow sense of the word. Don't just look at nursing as we did during the Florence Nightingale and the Mary Seacole era. Right. Nursing has expanded way out of that. If you are in, let me see, the most... Um, <laughs> Creative, creative city or, or country that would just have nursing in every single area. Yeah. It's like yeah. the US, for example. Yeah. yeah. Yes. My friend works within insurance. This is something she has been telling me forever mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to come and join her in Boston yeah. because she's making something like 110,000 per year, yeah. US. Mm -hmm. And she's saying, come and join me. You make mm -hmm. a lot of, but, but that's not what I want to do. But what I'm saying, the reason why I mentioned that is that you can go into legal, so you can work for yeah. a lawyer, yeah. you know, yeah. and just review pay, review notes, yeah. you know. You can work in the, within the insurance sector, just review 
files again. You could work in the coroner's office. You could exactly. You could be a professor in the university. You could write. Remember the also. Journalist. Yeah, you, you not only the journalist, but you could write books mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for, for, for yeah. nursing, nursing oh books. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's endless. It's, it so is I say, absolutely endless. I agree. Nursing has expanded beyond any other profession out there. It's yeah. expanded faster than any other profession, yeah. and it's opened so many doors. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. you can't go wrong with nursing. Yeah. And, 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 and if you have an entrepreneurial spirit, um, there's so many things that you can do as an entrepreneur, yes. just with your, with your nursing experience and knowledge and, you know, as you use the word creativity and, and innovativeness and all of that, that comes with being a nurse. Yeah. Which is why I do so many, you know, extra, <laughs> <laughs> extra things because I, you know, I not only write books, but I found myself... Um, falling back on my herbal knowledge that I got from my mother. And yeah. I remember when we were growing up, she would actually make you bush tea yeah. on your ailment. The yeah. bush tea, and I take you back to school days where the bush tea she gave you just before school started was to cleanse you from all the mango eating and yeah. the guava eating yeah. and the constipation and so on. So you get the bitter um, pump food. Yeah. Mm-hmm. austerity yeah and then she would actually build you up with, with nicer herbs that's yeah. very nice you know lemongrass yeah. stuff like that exactly um i at the moment i make essential oils and infusions so i use that same i use bay leaf mm-hmm. and i make not necessarily bay rum mm-hmm. like they used to make it yeah i make uh, an infusion that can be used as a body spray and it, ironically, it actually, um, it can be used as an anesthesia. Okay. It okay. caused my pain. You see, when I had my fracture, yeah, once yeah. I passed, and I was having breakthrough pains, I was uh-huh. having Voltorol, which is a strong yeah. analgesia. However, I started to spray my foot with that thing that I made, you know, that, that daily yeah. concoction that I made. It smelled really nice. Yeah. And I didn't expect it to work. But hey, lo and behold, the pain went, and the next night when I felt that discomfort, I used it again and sprayed. It went again, and I said, oh, so it actually works as an anesthesia. Ah, and so, yes. I never just had that. those properties. Yeah. Yeah. Allergies, Allergies and I'm, saying, and I'm properties. And anesthesia too, because it kind of the place didn't feel numb, yeah. but it didn't have any discomfort at Not all, definitely. at all. Well, wow. it depends on what you put in it, though. Mm, it depends I on would what imagine you so. I would imagine you know, so. It. And then I use, um, I also made the lemongrass ray. Mm-hmm. So it has this nice aroma, mm-hmm. mild lemongrassy smell. So I use that. I use that as well. And you can rub your chest with that. You know, if you feel yeah. a bit um, congested, you can use that as well. And also the bay leaf. I also make carrot oil, which is good for your hair care. Yeah, I do carrot oil as well. Uh huh. Yes, and there's something called ilang ilang. Have you heard about yes. that? Yes, 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 yes. It has this nice a tree at the, perfume. The, yeah. And I make coconut oil, and I use I make an infusion, uh-huh. an essential oil from the ilang ilang, yeah, and yeah. just rub, and it's yeah. nice. Can use it for massage. Yeah. Yeah. And for soothing, so there you go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So as we as we were talking, I realized that I almost left without mentioning something that I really wanted to mention. Talk to me about your book. I know you have a couple of books coming out, or just out. I saw one, Sabaka, and the other Sabaka. one. Sabaka, mm-hmm. Sabaka Folk Tales. Yeah. So that's um, it's a combination of stories from um, childhood stories and new stories as well. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to interest you in the mermaid story. So you know, mermaid story is a very popular story worldwide, yes? Mm-hmm. We too have our mermaid at Chances yeah. Pond. However, mm-hmm. when the volcano burned out Chances Pond, nobody has figured out what happened what to happened the mermaid. To yeah. Okay, yeah. well, I figured it out. So mermaid, <laughs> so what happened? In the book, eh? In mm-hmm. the book. 
So what happened to Mermaid? Mermaid actually, she had, remember, she had a fin, right? Because she's a mermaid. Mm, yeah. And a, a lady's face. face uh -huh. Well, when she started to feel the heat, she prayed to God yeah. that she would be able to escape. And next thing she knew, she was running. Oh, so she, she lost her feet. tail and she got feet. And what happened now? Um, Jackie Lantern. Uh huh. Jackie Lantern was around and Jackie Lantern hid her treasures because you run with the treasures. She oh. hid the treasures for her. Unfortunately, Jackie Lantern did not make it. So next thing you know, Mermaid went to England. Uh -huh. And then she came back. So, Jack, so Mermaid back in Montserrat. Okay. But now she doesn't live in a pond anymore. So that's the new mermaid. For that's us. the new mermaid. All right. Yes. All right. All right. And I know that it's on um it's on Amazon. It is on Amazon. on Amazon. And then I did forgiveness. Forgiveness. I, I also did forgiveness. But forgiveness is a book resulting from my dissertation, from my research. Okay. For, yes. And um I actually decided to um create the manuscript and make it into a book mm. that's interesting that yeah. people can actually read and enjoy. Now you mentioned that I have books coming up, but there's one that, you know, is an anthology and it's a follow-up to the first one, first book that I ever wrote, Montserrat in England, Dynamics of Culture. So this one is more um, about Montserrat abroad in okay. the diaspora, uh -huh. yes, uh -huh. and it's almost ready. So it's going to be interesting that people have written their stories. There are about 14 writers. They have written their stories, you know, from the time, some of them are before volcanic days. Some people are from the Windrush times. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, when the barrels were important. Yeah. Were yeah. Yeah. And yeah. stuff like that. And there are a lot of evolving stories. It's beautiful. Okay, great. I'm you looking know, forward I'm looking for forward it. Reading it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I can't thank you enough for spending time with me today. I really do appreciate it so very, very much. Thank you so, so much. You thank have you. a truly great afternoon. Thank you. And let me say thank you very much. I actually enjoyed you know having this talk because yeah. it has, you know, brought back so many memories. Yeah. And don't forget. 40 years of nursing is no easy feat, I right? I so to know. remember, to reflect on, I remember you've done 40 years of nursing and you're still doing it. And you're still so, doing it. <laughs> yes. It like awesome. makes you actually feel good. It does. It does. It does. And I've met children. I've met children who um, their parents would say, oh, she, this nurse was at your delivery. Yeah. And yeah. they are my children. You, you, you see? Yeah. So that is beautiful as well. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so very much, my dear. Thank you.